Hey everyone, welcome back to another iLogic video. Today I want to talk about how you can install Visual Studio onto your workstation. And for those of you who want to take your um, iLogic skill to the next level and perhaps do this full time, or maybe you're already doing it full time and you just want to get um, more experience, I definitely recommend working more with Visual Studio, whether it's, you could create forms on Visual Studio, you could create exe files, you could create DLL files, and it just exposes you to a wider um, um, tools that are available to you as a developer. Uh, so that's what I have here pulled up, um, just a Google link to where you can download the latest Visual Studio uh, 2022. And the community edition is free, and that's what I will be using right now. So if I press it, it takes me here, uh, I could press that button and, and download it. Uh, or there's also older versions that you can install. Uh, but let's go ahead and install the 2022 Download Visual Studio. All right, so it's already running. I will run this. Yes. Just going to press continue. And as it's running, um, yeah, as it's running, I'm, I would just pause the video so you don't have to stick around and wait for the whole thing. Or it looks like it's already, all right, it's already done. So when you get to this interface, uh, what you're going to want to do is, we're, we're just creating forms and uh, basic applications. You can go in here and select what you want, but just for, for, for what um, I'm going to be showing is just uh, this right here. Uh, so you're gonna select this one. You're going to go ahead and go to individual components. So I've had um, an issue once where I was trying to use the Vault API to make some program. And I couldn't, and I kept getting errors, and I didn't know why. And it was because it was using, I was programming on the 4.6 framework, and I believe for the Vault API you need a 4.7 or higher. So um, just keep that in mind. Uh, you might come into issues where it's not working for you, or the program you have no reason, uh, you have no idea why, and it's probably because of the framework. Uh, so this this should be fine. Um, yeah, it should be fine. All right, and then what else? Language packs, English. All right, and what else is there? Okay, that's it. Uh, stall. Uh, I'm just going to pause this video and restart it when it's over. All right, it looks like it's done now. Um, by the way, I've been traveling around for the past four months. I've been working remote from different countries, different states, different cities, and I'll do some programming in, in the day, and then after I'm off work, I'll do some traveling, exploring. I love to hitchhike, I love to try new foods, I love to meet new people. Uh, so if you're interested in following me in my travels, uh, my Instagram is down below. It has nothing to do with iLogic or Visual Studio or anything. It's just me having fun. Uh, so yeah, my Instagram down below if you're interested in uh, following my travels. All right, so now that it's done, we are going to go ahead and launch this. Um, so I'll press launch. And you might have a screen that says to log in. Uh, and I already have an account. And so it's, it's free to make an account. If you have to make an account, go ahead and make an account. And so once you launch Visual Studio and, and are logged in, you're going to see this. And you're going to, to create a new project, we're just going to press right here, create a new project. And this, this video is just to show you how to get uh, Visual Studio installed and just to show you a little bit, uh, a little bit of stuff, uh, how you can get started to write programs for Inventor on Visual Studio. All right, so the ones that I typically use are console apps, uh, class library, and uh, window, window forms. Uh, so there's some in C-sharp and there's some in VB. I program on VB, and I'm, I'm assuming if you just know the basics of iLogic or basics of Inventor API, uh, you probably just do VB as well. So you could actually filter it by Visual Basic, and um, let's do Windows, All project types. Um, okay, we'll just leave it at this. And there, for a console app, this is kind of uh, this is an exe file. Uh, so we'll start off with a console app, but we're not going to select this one. We're going to select uh, console app dot uh, net framework. So you know what? Let's just um, can I pin this? I wonder if I could pin this. Oh, I can't. I, I think I could pin it once I make new templates. So all right, let's run this, and we're just going to leave it as this console app number one. So this is what I was talking about. If you're at 4.6 or lower, you might have issues when it comes to writing some programs. Uh, so let's go ahead and press create. And it should uh, pop up. So I could close this guy right here, the installer. 
Yeah, it's taken a while. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. So this is basically where you're going to write your code right here in, in submain. And first thing we're going to do is add a reference to um, the inventor API um, or the DLL file so that we can actually um, uh, write stuff to program on inventor. So I'll show you what I mean. So first thing you're going to do is go to add and go down to uh, reference. And right here, I'm going to browse for one. I'm going to browse. Uh, let's see if I remember. So we go to program files. And then we do, where do we go? Uh, Autodesk, Inventor 2022, bin, public assemblies, I believe. Uh, there we go. And uh, we're going to select this DLL file. Uh, because without this DLL file, if, you know, um, if you're trying to define an assembly document, uh, a Visual Studio off the box is not going to know what that is. But once you load up this library, it comes with those assembly document, part documents, and other stuff on, on the Inventor API so that it actually makes sense for Visual Studio to do stuff. So now that we added the reference, we're going to import it uh, here. Oops. Inventor. All right. Um, in this area, we can define stuff. And if we define it here, let's say um, Inventor app, Inventor application. It is, I, I can access it right here in the app, thank you, documents. So it's kind of like a, I don't want to say universal, but in this module, it's universal, I guess. Actually, uh, I am going to launch a vendor. Hold on, let me pause this real fast. All right, so all I've done so far is just, I, I just opened up Inventor and I opened up a file. And so right now I have defined Inventor app, but it's not defined as anything. Um, because if I type this uh, application, it, it's, it's not gonna work. So like if I define all oh, SM as assembly document, Normally, what we would do is just type this application, but it, yeah, it's not showing up. Uh, so what we have to do is uh, type NV app active documents. Um, but right now, um, NV app is nothing. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to import another reference, but this reference is already in the template, uh, and that is system runtime. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, I'm going to uh, import this, and then I'm going to set this equal to Marshall, get active object, and I'm going to type Venter application. And if if Inventor is not open and you have this line, it's going to crash on you. Um, you can create. Um, I don't remember it right now how to create um, an Inventor application. Is it is it just? Hold on, let's see. Create. Um, oh yeah, I think this might be the way to create it. Um, if, if it was closed, uh, if it was closed, you could create, I mean, if, if I did this, it will get the active object and then it'll create another inventor. And uh, I'll do this at the end of the video. I don't want to do this now. Uh, we'll test that later. But for now, we, we got inventor, we had a, the active documents. And so for this video, I'm not really going to go in depth into uh, how to program. It's just to get you set up on uh, Visual Studio. So let's just do something basic. Uh, we're just going to do a message box of this assembly document name. Full document name, and then press start. It's gonna create a console. And yeah, so this is the start and, well, build and then start button. Let's see. It's taking a while. Yeah, and they have other stuff. Yeah, uh, all right, there we go. They have other stuff like all right, so that's that's what it is. The um, documenting, and you know, you, you could you you could program like if it was um, uh, the iLogic interface. But I feel like this is more helpful because this, like, if I was to define component definition, uh, this shows up. I I believe in the inventor interface. This doesn't really show up. Uh, this in intelligence, it's not as helpful on, on the iLogic interface as Visual Studio. And it's uh, it's nicely colored and stuff. Um, I think these are interfaces. Yeah, these green are interfaces. This is a class, I believe. Yeah, it's a class. So it, yeah, it's nicely colored and stuff. All right, what else? And uh, hold on, let me pause this video for a second. So there's a couple of other stuff that you can do. You could um, do breakpoints. Um, so a breakpoint. Let's do like message box. Uh, 
list one message box says two you know what let's suppress this uh, we're just going to define uh, component definition uh, yeah component definition as components on currents and uh, let's skip go back to inventor all right let's just get this this left slab in here so now we have our component occurrence. Um, I can t insert a breakpoint right here. Uh, where is it? Is it here? Should I have it? Oh, right here. So, um, so now it's going to stop. I believe it stops before this happens. So let's just do a. Uh, let's get to the name. So let's run this. And it's going to stop right here. So we're not going to get that message box right away. We're going to press a button right now. Uh, let's run this. All right, so yeah, it stopped. It did, we didn't get an error and there's no message box. Uh, but if we press step into, um, can we get the message box now? Okay, step into again. Oh yeah, so the, the reason why I had to press it twice to step into is because it got to it got before it, it stopped before and then it completed this and then I had to press it again to do this one so that's, that's why I did it and it's going to go one by one um, it has an error out but if I want to get out of this break I could uh, press this button step out and it's going to uh, show the next message box right now yeah uh, so let's run this again and if I step out of this it will just continue. Uh, so yeah, so that's breakpoint. Uh, let's get rid of that, and we can also do st uh, step into, I believe, uh, build. Yeah, if we run this, um, it, it's just like the same thing. Uh, we will have to step on into each command. Uh, so this kind, this is pretty helpful when it comes to trying to debug your program. Um, let's see what else we can do. Let's get out of here. Um, I believe. Okay, this is going to be the end of this video. Um, and I'll probably uh, make some follow-up videos on how you can make uh, exe files or window forms or DLL files. Those, those are my favorite. Creating classes that can really help um, reduce your programming time or creating DLLs. Uh, if you're working for a specific company and you create a DLL, you can, um, yeah, it's just, just mainly to save your time and be more clean and more structured. Yeah. All right. So um, hopefully you guys like this video. Make sure to like, subscribe. Leave a comment down below and subscribe to my Instagram channel uh, down below.